Chapter 9, Rescue Once the Carpathia reached the Titanic's distress signal, Captain Arthur Henry Rostron went into action. He had the crew gather blankets and prepare hot drinks and soup. The three doctors on board each turned a dining room into a hospital. The gangway doors were opened and ropes and ladders were hung to transfer survivors from lifeboats to the ship. The Carpathia sped as fast as she could in dangerous icy water. Every 15 minutes, the Carpathia fired rockets and cannons in the air to show they were coming. Around 3.30 a.m., the ship arrived where the Titanic had sunk. People in the lifeboats heard Carpathia's cannons before they saw the ship. At 4 o'clock a.m., the first of the Titanic's survivors were brought to safety. Women were lifted on board with sling chairs, while children were lifted up in canvas bags. Men climbed up ladders. For the next four hours, the Carpathia took on more than 700 passengers. They were freezing and in shock. Women already on board the Carpathia stood at the railing, watching the other lifeboats empty. They were hoping to see husbands, fathers, or children from whom they had been separated. Too often, there was no happy reunion. Some men, mostly from first class, had been in lifeboats. J. Bruce Ismay had been one of the last to board one. When he reached the deck of the Carpathia, he looked dazed. He could barely speak. Ismay didn't respond to Captain Rostron's questions. Ismay sent a telegram to the White Star Line. Deeply regret advise you Titanic sank this morning after collision with iceberg, resulting in serious loss of life. Full particulars later. Ismay stayed alone in a stateroom for the rest of the trip. Joseph Bruce Ismay. Joseph Bruce Ismay was the son of the founder of the White Star Line. After his father died in 1899, Ismay took over the company business. It was his idea to build the Titanic as the grandest ship on the sea. Ismay stepped into the last lifeboat that left the Titanic. Many people felt it was cowardly of the head of the company to save himself while so many others died. His reputation would never recover. Ismay spent the rest of his life in seclusion. It is said that no one was allowed to speak of the Titanic in his presence. He died in 1937. <clears throat> By the morning of April 15th in New York, London, and around the world, the terrible news was spreading. Other ships on the North Atlantic had sent messages to land. The information, however, was incomplete or wrong. The Evening Sun reported all saved from Titanic after collision. The New York Times was much closer to the truth. Its headline ran, read, Titanic sinks four hours after hitting iceberg. Probably 1,250 people die. A list of survivors was posted outside their offices. Three days later, on April 18th, the Carpathia slowly steamed into New York City's harbor. A crowd of nearly 30,000 people waited at the Canard Pier. The Carpathia was a Canard ship. But the ship crept past it and stopped at the nearby White Star Line Pier. The onlookers were confused. Why would a Canard ship go there? Soon it became clear. Each of the Titanic's empty lifeboats were lowered into the water at the White Star Line Pier. They were all that was left of the ship. After the Carpathia returned to its own pier, around 9 o'clock p.m., the first passengers walked down the gangway. When Ismay left the ship, he was met by two United States senators. They had an order for him to appear at an investigation of the disaster the next day. The world wanted to know why this tragedy had happened. <clears throat> 